Welcome back to Emerald City Comic Con Day One. My name is Mike Avila and I am with Sci Fi Wire. And what is Sci Fi Wire? It is your one stop shop for all genre entertainment news, original videos, podcasts, the latest trailers. You want it? We've got it at Sci Fi Wire, and you can follow all of the coverage from Emerald City Comic Con at hashtag ECCC and hashtag It's a Fan Thing throughout the entire con. And right now, it is my pleasure to introduce to the live stage. One of comics' biggest artistic superstars, a guy you've known if you've been reading Marvel Comics the last 15 years, and the upcoming artist on Dark Horse's Berserker Unbound, Mike Diodato. Thank you. Mike, before you actually get started drawing, why don't you tell us who you're going to be drawing for us today? Yeah, I'm going to be drawing uh, Berserker Unbound. It's my new project with uh, Jeff Lemire for Dark Horse. It's um, a barbarian, I love barbarians. And uh, he's, he's coming from his world to our world, and he's taken care by his friend, uh, new friend, uh, Cobb. And uh, it's about their adventures and the, the, the beginning of their friendship. So I'll take care of the action and, and blood and stuff, and uh, Jeff Lemire will make you guys fall in love for the characters. <laughs> I can't wait to see the, the book because I, I always enjoy stories that bring, you know, the, the, the barbarians from past primitive ages into the modern day. Are you going to have a lot of fun with that whole stranger in a strange land? Yeah, thing? yeah. It's, that's the, this, this whole uh, contrast thing that, it, uh, that makes me happy to put, put things that are completely different together and two guys that are completely different, they don't speak the same language to get bounded and, and the rest I cannot say. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, let, let's see what the Berserker looks like. Go okay. ahead and, and, and get started and I'll just continue to stand off here to the side and bother you with questions as you start drawing. And I, and, and I guess my first question to you is, every artist uh, approaches a drawing differently. How does Mike Diodato approach uh, a drawing when he sits down at the table or standing here yeah. and starts to draw? I like to start for the head and uh, go for the for the rest of the of the body uh, following up and uh, and I, I see what happens I, I can make a mistake so I can make it bigger or depending of uh, I, I actually never had any uh, uh, any uh, classes of uh, anatomy and it's Actually, I, I feel I should have. <laughs> and uh, wait, that's interesting. You 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 didn't study anatomy that closely because I think a lot of fans would agree that y your your eye for anatomy is part of the reason that your art style has been so successful. Yeah, but but uh, I I learned by copying my 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 heroes on uh, the comic books I, I bought. So I learned from John Buscema, so from. But just by copying his figures, so uh, I know I don't know how many heads I should be here. How, where is? It's just by by guess, and uh, most of the time I guess it wrong. So I, the the rubber is my friend, and and so I'm in a in a in a bad spot here. I'm live, so I cannot make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see any race at the end of the pencil, so make sure you get it right the first time. Uh, question: Did you, as a as a young fan, did you read the How to Draw Marvel, How to Draw Comics the Marvel way? No, I only got this after uh, after I was a pro professional already, because uh, it was hard to get uh, books in Brazil, and so uh, there was no no schools there for 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 art or in my city. Uh, no internet, of course. Uh, it was pre-internet. Uh, so I had to learn just by copying my, my comics. I was lucky because my dad was a comic book artist. He never made a living out of this, but he, he, he did it for, for as a hobby. And uh, I got a lot of support from him. Uh, different from other artists that the family, you do not gonna be a comic book artist. You have to do something that makes money. And my dad was, he didn't care. He, he actually was uh, fulfilling his dream uh, with me. So we worked together doing, uh, he, he writing, and I'm doing the, the, the drawings for about 10 years in Brazil. 
but it's impossible to live from comics in Brazil. So I had to 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 start doing things to uh, USA to make a living of it, actually. Mike, what what materials do you like to to use when you're drawing? What pencils uh, and markers and, or brushes that you, that you like to use on a regular basis? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, the the be in the best way. I like to use the the best best ones, like the best pencil, the best, like the Winsor and Newton brushes and the uh, Hunt uh, pens. But I, any anyone can any kind of uh, brand can give you a good a good result. Uh, so it's not about much about the brand. So I use this this kind of. Uh, uh, brandless <laughs> things, and uh, but nowadays I, I draw mostly digitally. Uh, it's very rare for me to draw on paper. Uh, only oh, when I come breaking to my heart. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm an old school art collector to hear that, you, that you've abandoned paper. But I understand a lot of it is is for deadline reasons. Yeah, deadline, correct? and because uh, uh, I have to balance it's a. Uh, Comic books is a very demanding thing. You have to do a book a month. It's around 22 pages a month plus the cover, uh, pencils and inks. It's very demanding. And uh, so I have to get any free time I, I can get to, to see my family, see if they're still around, <laughs> to go to the gym. To So I, I came to understand that I need these things for my art to look better. If, I'm, if my life is good, if I take care of my health, uh, it will re reflect on my, on my art. So it's not a wasting of time as I used to think when I was younger. So uh, that, that's what, one of the reasons I changed for, uh, for digital. Also because I love uh, uh, this uh, digital, the computer and things, and I like to be updated and uh, it's really fun. Uh, I, for example, I, I, I save a lot of time. Instead of doing those uh, flash of explosion, like a, a million of, of tiny uh, lines, there is a tool that I put there, and they are, they are there. So I can worry about bodies and other things more important. So I, I think it's a good thing. On the other hand, you, you lose a, a source of income. That is the... the sure, the sale of your original comic yeah. book. But uh, since I became like three times faster, I, I think it was worth it anyway. Are you able to do more than a, a book a month now? I am, but I, I don't. I don't do. I use the time to, to read books, to, you know, to, to absorb more things that I can bring to my art. So it's, uh, it's worth it. In the 90s, I used to work too much. Uh, I used to do almost four books a month. It's uh, very hard. Plus the covers, which is rare. Usually the cover artists aren't doing the interior art anymore. I I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you, you're one of those rare artists who not only often does the cover to the book he's doing, but also the interior pages. Yes. Not that many artists do that anymore. Yeah, oh, covers are easy. Uh, covers are like a panel of a comic. Says him, covers yeah. are easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are uh, uh, in, in terms of time consuming. Unless you, you, you want to cover like George Perez with thousand, and then I say no. Nope, no, thank you. <laughs> but uh, in, in general, they are much, much easier and makes much, much more money. But I, I really, really like to do the interior comics. It's. Uh, uh, I would never migrate to do, uh, what's the name, uh, storyboards for movies. I know they, it gives a lot of money. Like uh, concept art for movies too, I know it's a lot of money. But I like to be poor. I like to work for <laughs> comics. <laughs> so, so tell me about the, the drawing at this stage. Uh, what are we seeing here? By the way, does Berserker have a name besides Berserker? Uh, not yet. <laughs> for now, it's You're just... You're being very cagey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yet. Uh, for now, it's just Berserker. And uh, maybe we have planned two more uh, story arcs. Maybe we, we give him a name or no. Uh, I don't like when 
we detail too much the life of some characters. Some series I watched, I started liking a lot, and then they started detailing all the, the background of what's happening, and kind of lost the magic for me. So uh, maybe we keep it this way, just. Okay, I think it's good to... Are you happy with where the to where it is now at this stage? With the pencils? Yeah, I guess so. I, I noticed you put a, a, a slight snarl there. Yeah. A, a very <laughs> a subtle move there. Uh, is this character going to be smiling a lot in this, in this no, book? No, no, no. He doesn't smile. His smile is for weeks. Mm, let me see. So tell me, tell me about Berserker Unbound. How did you and Jeff Lemire team up for this? Because as I said, you've, you've been under an exclusive contract at Marvel for a long time. Uh, I, yeah. I think everyone identifies you with Marvel Comics. So what led to you and Jeff teaming up for this creator-owned book? So we, we started working on uh, uh, Thanos, and I was in love with his writing. Man, he's so good. You know that. But I, amazing, I yeah. didn't Jeff know. I confess I didn't know. I never read something by him at the time. And I was, man, this, this is so good. And uh, we started uh, changing, uh, exchanging emails, and he asked me, hey, what about do we do a, a creator on this stuff? So I explained my situation. When, uh, I'm under a contract. We would have to do it slowly and wait till my contract is over. And OK, let's do it. What do we want to do? Uh, I want to do a barbarian. And that's it, my contribution. <laughs> I thought you told him. I, I'm not like the other co-creators. Oh, we talked a lot about the story, and uh, I'm dumb. I just did, said I want to do uh, a, a, a barbarian. And OK, I'll do a weird barbarian. And, and what, what about this? And uh, oh, this is good. So I, I, I sent him a, a, a couple of me images of how I visualize the characters. He loved it, and uh, for my surprise, because I tried to to work with other other guys uh, to do creator own, but they're always busy. And then I oh, let's do it, and then it never happened. I did layouts and everything. I'm talking to you, you know who I am. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then uh, not, nothing happens, but with him the other day. I, I, because I created a Dropbox uh, 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 file so you can share the, the things, it started pouring pages. And I was, whoa. And I was watching him, like, and the pages changed. And, I was, and two days it was done, 115 pages. And I was, man, this is amazing. He's and, prolific. And, and yeah. what's interesting, too, is that he's a cartoonist so he understands uh, about the art. Does that make the partnership easier when, when the, the person who's writing it is, is also someone who, who knows how to draw? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, my first partnership with somebody who, who draw was Bruce Jones on Hulk. And everything he wrote was, uh, I just drew what he wrote exactly and it worked because he knew what, how it works in comics. Raise your hand if you love his work on the Hulk. They, I'm One, telling you. Two. Okay. No. <laughs> epic, epic Hulk run. <laughs> and the Bruce's run was one of the best. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I learned a lot by, uh, for storytelling, just drawing his, his, his comics. And uh, with Jeff, it's different because since it's a collaboration, his uh, writing is very loose. He doesn't detail much what I should do or. and. Uh, I add pages, and it's a kind of a different thing for me because sometimes I was thinking, can I do that? And then, oh, it's mine. I can't do, I can't do that. <laughs> and, and it's great. Uh, he, he really knows uh, uh, how it should. I have been working with some uh, writers uh, that came from other uh, medias, and they still don't know how to work comics work, so sometimes they describe a scene like uh, the guy entering the car, uh, put his uh, hat away, open the, <laughs> the window, says goodbye in one panel. It's not a, a, a cartoon, a, a animated thing. 
So I have to make more panels to fit this. And, but it's hair, it's weird. Uh, mostly they know what to do. Look, you're inking the barbarian's, the berserker's face. Uh, is there any part of the, uh, of the character's physique uh, that gives you more trouble than others? Um, man, uh, there is this, this kind of the dragon belt I, I drew that I have no idea how it looks. <laughs> I will make it up. <laughs> but the rest is okay. I used to have uh, trouble with hands, but after so many years uh, drawing them, and because I'm hiding them here, I have no trouble. <laughs> I also noticed you cut them off just above the knees so you don't do feet. Yeah, that's Feet true. are always the, the trickiest thing. Yeah. There are some guys that are perfect. There's a guy named, it's a, I think it's Italy, Saudelli. Man, the, the, his feet are fantastic, amazing. And then there are many artists whose feet are not amazing. You yeah, know who we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, I, I, I learn from everything, from the bad drawings for the good drawings. Who were the artists that you, that you really loved uh, seeing their work when you were just a fan before you got into the business? Neil Adams. Neil, I have to see to go there and to this <laughs> because he's my idol, he's fantastic. And he's uh, so many years in the business and he still kicks everybody's asses. Sorry about the asses. No, I cannot say asses, right? I did it again. So you said it now. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, uh, man, he's fantastic. He's a, a power force. Um, uh, also, uh, I, I have a big influence from uh, Frank Frazetta. I only, uh, every time I draw a cover with a lot of people going after somebody, I try to be Frazetta. I, how he does it. So I, I'm always learning. Uh, he also drew like some of the greatest covers featuring barbarians ever. Oh yes, yes, yes. He's he was the best, and uh, I, I'm always learning. I, I, and it, every time I found a, a new artist that I didn't know, uh, I try to learn. Um, for example, uh, right now I rediscovered uh, uh, Alberto. Uh, Sorry, Breccia. He did uh, uh, Mort Cinder with Oster Head is, uh, from Argentina. He did it in the, in the 50s, I guess. And it's great, it's fantastic. And I uh, never had the chance to read it. I knew his art, but never had the chance to read Mort Cinder. And I'm blown away and I'm ashamed of my art just by, oh my God, what I'm doing. And, and then it's, it inspired me to, to get better, to try to, to, am I rough? <laughs> You're fine. Um, so I can recover some things that I, I left behind because it, my art is always shifting from one way or another, uh, especially with the, uh, with this uh, digital thing. The, the tendency is for you to, to do things too clean. And uh, I have to, to watch myself to, to try to make it dirtier. So uh, it's not so, and because you make less mistakes because of the control, control Z, and it's too clean. So I have to mess it up a little bit. And uh, there are a few people that I, I ask for advice for where is my art going? Because sometimes you cannot see. I used to, to ask uh, my editor, Tom Brevoort at Marvel a lot. Uh, not a lot, but once in a while, Tom, what do you think? Am I using too much gray? Am I, do you think it's too much uh, stiff? And, uh, and no, it's okay, it's okay. But uh, I'm always worried about the direction. But sometimes you don't see it going and then it's too late. So I, uh, I think a lot of fans would, would have noticed that your art style since, for example, the, the Hulk run that we talked about earlier has evolved. Um, and, and you mentioned Neil Adams, and there's more photorealism in, in, in the work that you've done recently. Was that a conscious decision that you made to kind of uh, adapt and, and, and change your, your art style? Yeah, uh, my, the, my, the first change I did was when I, I started publishing uh, in the US in the 90s. 
when I saw the work by the image guys, Jim Lee and, and Max Silvestri, I was blown away by their art and I tried to imitate them. And uh, uh, it got me uh, Wonder Woman and I was loving it. But I was working too much in the 90s. In the end of the 90s, nobody wanted to work with me because my art was too bad. So uh, I, 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 just, I, I knew some, something was going wrong. So I, I made the decision to, to work less, to, uh, uh, to put more uh, love on my work and get less money because I'm working less, but I would be rewarded in the future. So I, I started to do things more carefully and, uh, and that was the main reason because I, I had lost my love for comics. I had to think what brought me to comics. The, when I was doing uh, uh, independent work at home with my friends talking about, and this love I had lost, so I, I had to rewire my, <laughs> my head. And that's any decision I make on, uh, on, on comics today uh, for my career is based on this thing. I have to feel be good about what I'm doing. Uh, money comes second. So, but in the end, money comes because I'm doing a good work. So, so it all worked out. Yeah. Let's talk okay. about your career at Marvel. I mean, you've, you've done so many books at Marvel, drawn so many heroes. Is there a hero at Marvel that you've wanted to draw that you haven't been able to? Oh, yes. Um, Kazar, Kazar. Uh, because of the, mostly of course of the tiger, the, the, the saber tooth thing. And um, let me see, I drew them all actually. I think uh, it was I'm only- surprised by, by, by Kejo, that's not, that's not one that you hear often. Yeah, because Marvel. it's Marvel's uh, Tarzan. So I want to do Tarzan. And of course Conan, the, now I'm having the chance. Yes, and, and now you're finally getting the chance to draw Conan as part of Savage Avengers. Um, when you signed on to do that title, did you know that that was going to be uh, essentially like the end of your Marvel exclusive? Uh, uh, no, oh, Savage Avengers, yes. I actually told them, uh, told Marvel one year before, ago because I had already decided and I didn't want them to, you know, to, I already decided it was not fair for me to hide it from them and they could make decisions about uh, uh, giving the, the projects they want to give to uh, a guy from the house, to, to people they want to attract, you know, uh, to make it easier for them. So I told them they were very supportive. Man, it was amazing. Uh, and they said that the doors will be always open for me. And so I hope when I'm living under a bridge, they, <laughs> they have set me back. <laughs> How, uh, how crazy is that book going to be? Because Conan with the Avengers can't be anything but a crazy book. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's a good crazy. Uh, it's, man, it's, uh, I think it's all uh, uh, an air dream to put all of them together. It's very crazy, but it works. You're going to see. And it's um, eye candy to draw. And uh, Conan versus Wolverine. And, uh, and Electra and Punisher together, and wow, it's, it's, it's a really a, a fantastic uh, farewell grief they gave me. W were those the comics that you grew up reading as, as, as a fan? Yeah, it was mostly, mo actually mostly uh, Captain America. Uh, it was the, the other guys, but uh, um, my, now that I'm old, I, I like to draw more savage stuff, so. And uh, most of them, I have already drawn them. So it was kind of, uh, I had the chance to, to draw them for the last time and uh, to compensate for any bad drawing I did so I can do it better now. <laughs> Tell me what, you, what you're doing here. You're, you're, you're inking now. Um, how do you determine the shading that you include? Oh, yes. I, I, 
I don't. Usually, I pick the the light from here, uh, but it depends on if it's a loose loose illustration. But it's it's an uh, an interior comic. It depends on the on the environment. So, but uh, uh, depends on the what's going on. Uh, if it's a very dramatic scene, I put the light very so the shadows cover all of them, and uh, depends on the mood. Uh, depends on the what where it's going on. Usually, I just pick a side, and usually it's uh, light from here. But uh, there is no rule. What are some of the uh, bits of advice you give young artists who come up to you at conventions? What, what are the things you usually get asked? Yeah, the, the uh, yeah they ask how to get into how, what they should do, and. Uh, I really don't know what they should do. I, I tell them what I did. Uh, in my time, I did uh, fanzines. There are uh, printed copies uh, in Xerox uh, that I used to sell to, to people. Nowadays, they can use, uh, uh, put them online in a blog. In a, there is multiple ways to, uh, to share your art and to get uh, input from the readers. I tell them that they must do that, so it's a kind of lab, labora lab laboratory that where you experience things and you get uh, input and you grow as an artist. You have to do, even if it's wrong, if it's ugly, but you will grow with the process. And, uh, and they, in that they shouldn't wait to be, uh, I wanna work for Marvel or DC. No, do your own thing and uh, they will find you. You grow your own audience, and uh, in the end, you, you'll be found. Or not, maybe you don't wanna be found, maybe you find out that you wanna do creator owned. So you just do it, it's, you just need paper and a pencil, and uh, if you wanna make people see, take a picture and put it on the internet. So it's, you can create worlds with this, uh, you can create a, a blockbuster movies in comics with no no money at all. You can create worlds. It's, you have complete control. I think that's the most attractive thing about comics. There is not much people, even in, in mainstream comics, you only have uh, the artist, the editor, and the writer. We are responsible for what's going and on. And an unlimited budget. Yeah, and uh, so it's, uh, it's great. If I work for advertising, for example, it's a bunch of people saying, change this, change that. In Hollywood, my God. So it's, it's your chance to be, to be the owner of everything. So it's, it's great. I love comics. So we're about eight minutes left, so let's. Okay, let's. <laughs> I'll stop bothering you here for a minute so you can finish uh, inking the Berserker. Although you're doing a really good job here. And I see the dragon belt there. It's like a crotch plate <laughs> down here. I don't, I don't remember how this thing looks like. Is that like the fur, of, the skin of a dead animal that he's wearing as a, as a coat or cape? Yeah, it's some dead animal. Once I did a, a, a battle drawing competition with um, Adam Hughes, and he talks a lot. So I, I, I finished very, I finished first because he kept talking, talking, and I was like, keep talking, keep talking. He can't, he can't talk and draw at the same time? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you're taking different steps in this, this being a, a live thing on the stage, and, and you're doing primarily digital. But when you sit down at the, at the board, I mean, at, at the table with your, your digital tablet, uh -huh. I guess, do you approach it the same way, where you just do the light doodles? Yes. With the I, digital, is it a digital pencil? Is that the proper term for it? Yeah, the, the, the difference is I have layers. 
So I do the layers. It's like a, a, a paper that can do, you can see the other side. Layers, I do layers, then I put another layer, do better and do better. So it's a lot of freedom because you cannot make mistakes. In paper, yeah, you can make a mistake. In paper, you cannot. If you make a mistake, you have to put white, white, white ink or put a paper. It's harder to, so you have to be more careful. And in what about background, does, does digital help you with, with busy backgrounds? For example, this book is taking place in the modern day, so there's going to be cities and buildings and cars. Oh yeah, I, I, I use a lot of reference from uh, Google <laughs> and also the Google SketchUp. Uh, it's a 3D, 3D uh, uh, app that you can find all sorts of things like weapons and cars and buildings. It helps a lot because I don't have to prove that I can do things on perspective or cars, but if I have the reference, oh, better, I'm faster. So I use them a lot. Yeah, we but, see it on the, on the cover too, that you guys have released for the, the first issue where he's, in, he's standing in the middle of traffic. Yes, on yes. The car. So what, that's a combination of your drawing mm. with uh, photo references? Yes, photo reference and uh, uh, 3D models. So I use them all. I, I don't recommend for uh, guys that are starting now, that, that they're starting to draw now. I recommend them to suffer. You have to suffer and you have to learn and then you can use this stuff. But if you use now, it's gonna be like, uh, you're gonna depend forever from this. So it's better to learn and then you can use this, uh, I don't know the name, when you take a, a path that is closer, I don't know. Okay, four minutes. You have four minutes to make some more magic. <laughs> <laughs> so you're filling in the blacks now? Yeah, put some, some weight on it. When you did draw on paper, um, did you do a lot of your own inking? Do a what? Did you do a lot of your own inking when you were yes. doing uh, Yes, uh, uh, just a, a couple of periods of my career I had the inkers. I prefer to ink myself. Uh, I think most of the artists do. Some are not good on, on it. But the thing is, uh, when another person inks your work, even if he's better than you, it uh, takes part of the personality that you put there. So, can I do nipples? I did. it. Sure. <laughs> Men nipples are allowed. Enthusiastic yes for the audience. <laughs> Men nipples are allowed. I don't know why not women, but uh, it's not the place to discuss it. So, in Brazil, we see nipples all the time. <laughs> We're trying to keep this one family friendly. Okay, so <laughs> nipples are bad. <laughs> are you doing all the covers for Berserker Unbound? Yes. Along yes. with the interior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And how? Ongoing series, uh, limited oh, series. And there is going to be a variant cover by uh, the man, uh, Mike Mignola. Yes. Ooh. I don't know how they blackmail him to do that, but I don't care. There is that's a nice. That's a, that, that's a great artist to have hey, co-variant it's, it's good. I think I'm not going to give it to you, you. It's mine. You're, you're happy with it? Yeah. It looks fantastic. <laughs> I like it. Usually when I do in things big like that, I end up doing him like, like small. But if some way I got it right. <laughs> I don't know why. Because I have no background on anatomy, so. I pretend I know where the muscle are, and that's why I like drawing Hulk. He's... I think you're doing a great job of pretending. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one thing I learned that's that's right for comic, for drawing is, is it has to look right. It doesn't have to be right. If it looks right, it's right. That's a great saying. Makes sense. That, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be right. It has to look right. <laughs> yeah. A great way to put it. Now, where where are you going to decide where to sign this? Okay, I think here. Man, I spent years training this signature. Well, every great artist has to, to, to 
find the right signature, right? Yeah. It's a mix of uh, Frazetta and my dad's. That's beautiful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Mike Diodato. Thank you. And Berserker. Berserker Unbound from Dark Horse. When does it come out? I go, uh, August. August? Great. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you. For joining us. This is fantastic. I mean, what a treat to see you draw this right here. Okay, hey, guys, don't, don't forget, keep following everything on the hashtags. ECCC and hashtag it's a fan thing and coming up next on the live stage here at Emerald City Comic Con Brian Shermer on Fair Lady Cool, thank you